The Catskills are the birthplace of dry fly fishing in the United States. I mean, it, it all started up here in the late 1800s. The small stream, you know, this, this was brook trout water. Halford sends th this guy a bunch of flies. He takes the time to try to adapt the English patterns, and they, they made it an, an art form. You know, people all over the world come, come to these fabled streams to fish where, you know, where, where, where Theodore Gordon and Rude Cross and, and all these guys, you know, Lee Wolf and all these guys fished. For us, it's like walking out in the field in Yankee Stadium. It's, it's amazing. But it just, this is the way I was taught, and I respect them for that. That's my legacy. So this, is, this fly actually started out as a Christmas ornament that I put in an ornament and then I took it fishing one day and I, I can't keep the fish off of it so now I tie them all the time. It, and it makes no sense, it's all kinds of crazy colors, but when it gets wet, it, it just works. So this is something you made up? Yeah. Well, I, I mean, we've all had that conversation about inventing flies. Just because you change one color of a style of fly doesn't mean you've invented fly, it just means you've changed the color. There, there's no rules with tying. If, if you want to call it your own fly, then you can call it your own fly. My name's John Apgar. I'm uh, currently the vice president of the Catskill Fly Tying Guild, if, if that means anything. It just means I was in the right spot at the wrong time. You think you're de developing a new fly, you're not. It's, it's, it's just a color variation. They're all basically the same concept, different colors, some deviation. My name's Dave Catazon. I've been associated with this place probably, no stretch, uh, probably 1977, before we even built it. My name is Ed Walsh. I am the docent for the museum at the Catskill Fly Fishing Center. My main objective is to just welcome people into this part of the center. The Deddies and the Darbies were very much involved in getting this off the ground, the thought, the, the idea, and then continuing with that idea to make it into fruition. And fly fishing at a time, it's not so much anymore, was, was really a sport of the, the upper class. Uh, you know, back when they didn't have a lot of transportation to this area, you, you would read about people taking weeks and months off. You don't find people that talk about taking months off to, of, to vacation, but they used to come up here. You know, and that's, that's what opened this area up. This, this was a vacation spot. You know, this, you know, there was no Yellowstone National Park. There was, you couldn't go to Florida. You couldn't survive. I didn't have any air conditioning, you know. Yeah, so this, this was it. This was to go into the mountains. My name is Tom Mason. I have been fly fishing, fly tying since I was about 25 years old. People would come to Cook's Falls and uh, it's right on the Beaverkill River. They get off at the train station, a horse and buggy would pick them up. They go into the all these houses that are still there, they were all boarding houses, that's where they vacationed, you know, people would, people would come here. Then when the automobile came and paved roads, that's the biggest thing that happened in this country to make it move along, was paved roads, you know, and that, that's what really changed everything. I'm a transplant. I'm from Long Island originally. Um, I've always loved coming up here as a kid. I loved reading the old stories, Washington Irving and all the old you know, folklore and tales and stuff like that. It's always had that, that mystical type uh, thing about it, that aura about it. My name's Seth Cavaretta. I'm, I work here at Deddy Flies. I just started here in May, actually. I retired from the service so um, after 27 years. Um, so now I'm working in the shop. I, I tie flies, I build rods, and then I obviously I do you know the floor here. Yeah, I mean there's a lot of guys that come from from the UK, uh, the Netherlands. Uh, Italy's really big. Uh, a lot of folks come over here from Italy to fish the Catskill streams. It seems the Italians seem to be very interested in the, in the Catskill style fly and, and 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 coming over here and fish. And they're all really awesome people. You know, they, uh, they appreciate the history and the lore of the area and uh, they want to experience it, so they come over. It's pretty neat. 
there's five, five or six reservoirs that supply the New York, New York City water supply. The, the uh, East Branch and the West Branch are both come out of reservoirs that are part of the New York City water system. The Never Sink is another one. Those, those waters, the water that comes out of there comes out of the bottom of the reservoir, which is cold, which makes that a, a wonderful trout fishery 12 months a year. Between that, the proximity to New York where all the sports would get out of the city after working all week in, a, in an office someplace, come up here, beat the water to death, and do whatever they did, that's how this, this, this really took off because, because of these individuals. And actually, the fishing actually probably started up here in DeBruce yeah. on the Never Sink, the small stream. You know, yeah. this, this was brook trout water. I mean, it, it all started up here in the late 1800s, and we've, you know, we've, we've, we've tweaked the flies a little bit. We've, we've, you know, we have, I'm sure the guys tying back then would really like tying with the feathers we have now. A lot of the tying techniques have just been passed down from years and years, and you just, you, just, you change colors to suit your, your style or your fish or your approach. The Catskills are the birthplace of dry fly fishing in the United States. Um, mainly started with Theodore Gordon. Before him, it was mostly uh, wet flies, uh, just like the old English did. Um, they would use old solid wooden rods and gangs of wet flies, three, four, five of them at a time, and they would swing those. Um, then Theodore Gordon came around and started experimenting and corresponding with Halford and Skews and them guys overseas. Halford sends th this guy a bunch of flies. Sports writer in England, they end up conversing by letter, goes over on a boat. You know, it took forever to get, it's not yeah, like, no. like Tom says, it's not like today, you know? This is the 1870s, 80s, 90s. The materials weren't all that great. He takes the time to try to adapt the English patterns. He goes around and gets the best feathers he can. He imitates some of those flies, but he does this variation of his own that, that, that's, that's still copied today the styles and everything, the proportions. And they, they made it an, an art form. But it just, this is the way I was taught. And I respect them for that. That's my legacy. And then we progressed a little further, Rube Cross. Uh, his style of tying the dry fly is basically what we consider the Catskill dry fly nowadays. Uh, everybody who came after basically was copying Rube Cross's style. These classic patterns, they were developed in this area, they're local to this area, they're unique to this area, and they catch fish, they still catch fish. It's almost exclusively what I fish is classic Catskill patterns, whether it's the dry flies and nymphs or the, the streamers and wet flies that were developed here for these waters. Um, they still produce and they're just, just plain old fun. So what constitutes uh, a Catskill dry fly? So, I mean, um, Catskill dry fly is, is, is typically, I mean, Harry Darby explained, uh, explained it best in his book, uh, Catskill Fly Tire, but it's, uh, you know, typically a size 10 through 14 hook, model perfect, you know, um, uh, wood duck or slip wings, um, you know, hackle, tied in the front, set back a little bit, to help with the balance of the fly, stiff tailing, and natural body dubbings or, uh, or quills, um, uh, you know, and that, and that Catskill proportions that are pretty, pretty specific. That's what pretty much makes a Catskill fly. Uh, you, could tell it, you could tell it right away that, that, that it was tied in the Catskill style. And a lot of people around the world or across the country, like as soon as they tie a fly with like either quill slips or wood duck wings, they automatically call it a Catskill style fly, but most of the time the proportions are kind of wrong. Um, the hackle should be about, you know, one and a half to two times the hook gap. The hackle is usually set back a little bit. People used to like to say that it was because the turl knot that was used back in the old days. I don't know if I agree with that because, you know, if you look at wet flies and stuff, those, those heads aren't set back from the hook eye at all, and they were using the knot for that. So um, I think it just, um, it moves the center of gravity back and allows the fly to float high and dry on the water, especially with, you know, these free stones and things like that. They're, they're, they're moving pretty quick sometimes. So uh, having a fly that rides high and dry 
is, uh, is pretty important. So. I really like tying Catskill drives. They're gorgeous flies, but I can, I can tie them all. It's, it, they're, they're gorgeous flies. They still work. They're fun to tie. The history behind it, the books, they're still, still one of my favorite flies. And, and back home where I fish, my, my rivers back home aren't real good dry fly rivers. There's, you know, they're mostly streamers and stuff because it's New Jersey put and take. But up, up here, it's, dry flies are fun. I've, uh, I've been tying flies for a long time, and when I retired, I, I bought a house up here so that we can come and fish the Catskills more often. Um, but, I mean, we used to come up all the time when I was working. My buddy had a trailer on Phoenicia, and that's how we discovered the Catskills, so it just kind of never left. Who but you um, I did, actually, because when I started tying, it was that there was no internet. There was books and very few of the tires would like to share their secrets. So it was the good old fashioned trial and error and make it look like the pictures in the book. Like <laughs> one of you guys asked when you walked in, what do you, you, you store bought? And I told you I am store bought. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I tie a lot of flies, about 350 dozen a year. But I don't, I, I, you know, there's the other part is if, if you have a, a nice looking box of flies, you have a lot more confidence in that fly, you'll fish it a lot better. So there is, there is something to be said for using a well-tied fly because you just think it, 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 it looks better, it works better, and you'll, you'll fish it better. So I came here, I was probably about 32. Same kind of format, people were telling me the same thing. They helped me, okay? Those people, they did a lot for me. They showed me a lot, they taught me a lot. Not only by telling me, but by me watching them. Those people are gone now. Now it's my turn to do the same thing, to pay it back. That's why we're here, that's why this place is open. We want to continue this heritage. Well, I started tying flies when I was about 12, 11 or 12 years old. So like I said, I grew up on Long Island and my best friend, Mark Roussel, uh, we met in elementary school and I would stay over his house and we would hang out and sleep over and stuff like that. And he had an older brother named Lee and Lee used to tie flies and do taxidermy and bow hunt and all that kind of stuff. And it's just, you know, we'd be, me and Mark would be over there standing over his brother's shoulders as he's watching him do it. And he started teaching us, you know, some basic stuff here and there. And then it just kind of took off. Ever since then, I've been tying flies since I was about 12 years old. Um, like I said, I went into the service, so it was kind of hard to, to hone my craft and, and, and fish and stuff like that being all over the place. But um, I always kept up with it a little bit, you know, when I could. Um, and then, you know, the last few years, uh, starting in about mid to late 2000s, I started getting a little more serious into it. I got into fly tying because, probably because of Paul Jorgensen. He was a Danish engineer who came over here in the late 50s. <clears throat> he worked for Singer Sewing Machine Company. In the fishing circles, he's considered the best all-around fly tire, probably whoever ever lived. Dry flies is the reason he moved down here, because he didn't feel his dry flies were to his level, or to, to the level of the individuals who made those particular style of flies. That's why he moved here. No, no, that, but, but you ask me, I'm telling you the truth. Yeah, it's been therapeutic for me. And I'm not gonna lie, uh, because of the individuals I knew, it's, it's, it's open doors for me. Yeah, I get a little emotional, but yeah. it's true. Hey, man, type flies. Yeah. Oh, wow. Yeah. I type flies for him. Oh, man. That's yeah. great. Because of him. <laughs> I keep pointing to him because I have to. Well, these individuals too, but because of him. I was with him. I do remember the first trout I caught on a fly was in a little little stream in New Jersey when I had, I mean, I had a fly rod, but to be honest, I fished little trout streams and used a fly rod with worms so I could stay away from the bank to catch, to catch the trout when I was a kid. But then I, I got, it, got it more and more involved in it. And my first was a brown trout on a Royal Coachman dry fly. I remember on, on the old part of the stream that was part of the Erie Canal that was converted to a trout stream and <laughs> by my house. That was, that was what started it. You know, I just, I love the challenge of it. I love, I love the solitude. I love being up here in the mountains. 
throughout the seasons as they change and uh, the quiet and the solitude and then like I said like the challenge of it and all that stuff I mean half the time I don't catch anything but it's just enjoyable and relaxing to be out there. As I got older I started to become more interested in, in fly fishing I just it was a it was very it's relaxing you get in the middle of a stream you know it, yes some people will think it's all about catching fish I think it's all about trying to catch fish and the people I've met uh, are just wonderful. They're, they're, they're dedicated to the sport. They're all environmentally oriented, environmentalists. Everything we talk about is clean water and trout that live in clean water. So I, I've made a good choice. I'm, at my age, I'm, I'm very glad that I was able to find fly fishing. The folks around here love nothing more to pass their, their knowledge on and, and people who are genuinely interested and want to learn come on down come to the museum come to the shops ask questions talk to folks uh, that's number one number two uh, observe the water like sit back on the bank and just watch the river watch what the fish are doing watch what the bugs are doing watch what the currents are doing um, don't just charge into the river stomping around um, and just blindly casting. Just pay attention and learn learn the rhythm of what's going on around you, you know, the, of nature and all that stuff, how the stream moves, how the winds move, and how the fish are rising, the bugs, all that stuff. Just watch. And eventually you'll see you'll see rhythms and patterns, you know, happening around you. And then just take your time, present your fly, make your cast. Um, sit there back, cast, back casting like crazy and all that stuff isn't going to catch you any fish. The fly, your fly has to be in the water. So practice, practice presenting your fly and getting a good, a good drift and, uh, and fish will come. time that you get here's one for the good old days make the most of them grab the end of your neighbor grab your most favorite dish here's one for wild laughter make it loud till the Think, Pete, what do you think about that whole interaction in there? Dude, that was amazing. I'm like inspired. I wasn't gonna tie my own flies, but now I'm 100% gonna try and tie my own flies.